Good evening. I got to tell you, it's a real privilege to be here to share with you some technology and concepts that I'm really passionate about. And I'd like to, to start this presentation off with you all. Uh, I'd like you to, for a moment, just consider your own reality. And I, I mean your own reality. Feel yourself in your seat. Look around. Listen to the, the crowd around you. Uh, take in the inputs that, that make up your reality. John Locke, back in the, in the 17th century, said that, that our own reality is actually a representation of, of what we detect through our senses. Later on in the, in the 20th century, you have Niels Bohr saying that there's actually something a little bit more nuanced to that, more fundamental, that the very act of observing uh, in, in some fundamental way creates our reality. But here at Cal Poly, with, with our learn by doing uh, mantra, I, I think it's appropriate to, to really consider the fact that, that it's our, our senses that provide us our reality. Uh, it's, it, it really is our interaction with the outside world as we determine it by feeling things, by seeing things, by smelling things, that creates what we consider to be real. Now, this, this discussion about what is real or what is your reality is pretty appropriate uh, in this day and age in the sense of, of thinking through social media, the impact of social media, uh, and the whole discussion about fake news. We now have technology that packages different flavors of reality. Uh, and one person's perception of, of what is real, at least in that narrow dimension, can be quite different from another's. The good news, though, is that, that any of this discussion about what is real when you're talking about, about social media, uh, we can always change that. You can, you can always just turn it off. Oh, by the way, for those of you under 30, that, that's what we used to do to, to turn things off. <laughs> you can look it up. Uh, but it's just a single dimension of reality. We know that, that I'll still be standing here on the ground. Gravity will be holding me down. I can't squeeze lemonade out of a block of steel. There are certain things that, that we consider to be, to be fundamentally real. And it involves our senses, but it involves all of our senses together that, that create our reality. Now, technology, uh, for really the first time in human history, uh, is getting to the point where, where we can hack that a little bit. If you think about it, virtual reality is one small step towards, uh, towards being able to control what we perceive as real. If you've put on a, a high-end pair of uh, virtual reality goggles, uh, it's an amazing immersive experience. In fact, with today's really high-end stuff, uh, it has a field of view that, that, that goes beyond what you can see and a resolution, screen resolution, that goes beyond what you can uh, determine as individual pixels. So we really are close to the point where the computer-generated world inside virtual reality is imperceivable. There's imperceivable differences uh, between that and the real world. Again, though, I, I, it's, it's fairly obvious to, to most people who try this out that, uh, that it is immersive, it's amazing. You can be on Mars, you can be underwater, you can be doing any, anything that the computer-generated reality will give you. But it's not truly immersive. We're, we're tactile creatures. We, we like to, to reach out and touch those fish, uh, to interact with, with the virtual world that we see within those goggles. But this is, this is where it's starting to, to get interesting. What you see here is a pair of, uh, this is a, a glove, this is actually a, a one of a pair of gloves that's made by a company right here in town. It's called it haptic gloves. You put a pair of these on, a virtual reality headset, you actually see representations of your hands in your field of view, and you can physically interact with the object that the computer is generating. This has the ability to, to physically stop your hand from going through a virtual coffee cup as you grab it, reach out to grab it. It has 130 different touch pixels on the underside of the hand that lets you feel that that is a solid coffee mug, or that is a piece of glass, or that is something that's made out of, of velvet. It's really amazing when you start putting together sight, and in this case, one more uh, of your sense, the sense of, of touch, and the a kinesthetic feeling that goes along with touch. Uh, you're, you're, you're truly entering something that, that feels like you are in a different environment, that you're interacting with things that, that came from a computer. And really, this, this whole concept is, uh, is scalable to the entire body. If you think about it in, a, in an abstract sense, all you have to do is pixelate the body, which really isn't that hard. We're, we're pretty limited in, in what we can feel. So if you had a suit that was able to, to stimulate 
your skin in the same sort of way that, that interacting with clothes or with any object uh, would touch your skin. Uh, if you're able to, to simulate the way that, that heat transfers into your body or out of your body when you touch a, a cold water or steel as opposed to a, a block of wood. If you're able to, to simulate the forces that your joints feel, every degree of freedom, and you can do this pretty straightforward with an exoskeleton that, that provides the correct force to each degree of freedom that you have. So if you're lifting a weight by pushing down in an opposite direction on your, on your elbow, it actually feels like you are lifting something. So you can scale this idea of, of a, a, a touch suit uh, across, the, across the body, and it would end up looking something like this. In this sort of device, you strap yourself in, and you can run, jump, fly, swim, do whatever you want in whatever environment you want. And for that time, that is your reality. In fact, the computer is generating the entire physics that go along with this. In order to walk stably in this stationary position, uh, it's lifting the, the robotic system in the, in the exact counter to what, what gravity would be doing if you were normally walking. This is not science fiction, although this sort of idea has been portrayed in science fiction many times. Uh, this is a system that is absolutely buildable, and, and there are a number of people who are working towards this uh, at this point in time. But here's where it gets really interesting. If you take that idea of, uh, of a full-body immersive suit, and you, you combine it with, um, with the ability to interact with the world, then you're no longer limited by, by just what you can, what you can touch. What, what you can do uh, with, a, with the right telerobotic system is take a very sophisticated robotic hand that has sensors and control that with the, with the full body system that I just showed you. Uh, and, and you will perceive that you are embodied in that robotic system. We've demonstrated this uh, across, across country. Uh, and across the world, in fact, with a, a, an operator wearing the headset and these pair of gloves here, uh, and a telerobotic system doing a Rubik's Cube uh, in London. Look it up. You can, it's, a, it's an interesting video to, to see, to actually realize that the person in this apparatus is controlling a system that, that's across the world and feeling what that robotic arm feels touching what the robotic arm touches in the same sort of way that you'd perceive it. And it doesn't have to be a, a, just a, a robotic arm. Uh, it can be a wheeled vehicle. It can be a robotic hawk. It can be any device that, uh, that can interact with the real world can be mapped to a user. So what you have now is, uh, is the ability, instead of just creating a virtual simulated world, we do what we're, call, what we're calling computer mediation where the computer is acting as an in-between between what the real world is and what the, what the perceived world is to the user. The neat thing about that is that, that because the system is providing the user with all the physics that go along with it, their reality can be designed. You can change the laws of physics. You can, you can do things in lunar gravity or, or zero gravity, uh, large scale, small scale. Imagine, for example, uh, a micro-robotic surgery suite. They have those now today, where, where you have very, very tiny, very precision uh, end effectors doing the operation on, for example, the inside of an artery. With this sort of, of idea, the surgeon who's performing that surgery isn't limited to, to looking at the small scale. In fact, you can create an environment for that surgeon in which they feel their reality is that they're a spelunker. They're walking through a cavernous system, and if they see a stalactite up there that has an arterial blockage, they can take it off with a jackhammer. And in fact, if you consider that, there's really no reason it has to look like a cave at all. It can be the Sistine Chapel, uh, and you can be in, in zero gravity, float up to the ceiling, uh, and really, in that particular case, it might be the skills of an artist or a sculptor that is more appropriate to performing microsurgery. So this is, this is a really interesting concept when you start putting these pieces together, the fact that, that you can have an environment that's creating your reality that is connected to the real world, but connected to the real world by a set of physics that we get to design, by environments that we get to design. 
And the implications of that is something that, that I'd actually I'd put on you to, to think about afterwards. What, what does it mean if we have this sort of, of capabilities? Because this, this will be coming. This is something that, that could be built today, will be out there within the next 10 years. What does it mean to you? What does it mean if you have the ability not only to create any environment you want for entertainment or training or simulation or any of the things that, that sound sort of, of obvious, but what if you can, for example, map one skill set to another reality? Have an artist be a surgeon uh, or, or any number of, of combinations. And also, I think even some, in some ways more importantly than what would you do with this sort of system, is how is the system going to be brought and folded into society? Who are the gatekeepers for this type of technology? Who are the ones who decide what realities to package and what laws of physics to design uh, and what way to, to make the mapping between a real world and a virtual world? This is a, a tool, much like the internet is a tool. It can be used for, for really amazing, wonderful things. It can be used for some really dark and disturbing things. Uh, and what does it really mean to you? Is it something that, that is like a mechanical drug where you can actually withdraw and escape from, from the real reality uh, into a reality that, that we get to design? Or is it something that is actually creates it more expansive, lets more people with a wider breadth of skills uh, do things that they would not be physically uh, able to in, in any other way? I think that's the really interesting question, and it's been fascinating to watch this technology develop, and I'm really looking forward to, to continuing on with it uh, and see where it leads. So thank you very much. <laughs>